Hey guys, this is John, and I'm playing 5 Minutes. I must avenge some losses that I've had recently. My 5 Minute rating's been on the slide. So let's get back in the saddle, shall we? I'll just play the main line of this Slav, or Shebenenko Slav, as this is called. I played this line before in a video. Bishop f5. For some reason I thought this was dubious. Maybe not though. Okay, let's go queen b3. And I assume he'll play b5. No rook a7, okay. Hmm. Okay, well, do we want to take or do we want to play bishop d2? We better take. Let's just clarify the central structure. Just right off the bat. Then maybe knight e5. Just to preempt knight c6. If he plays knight c6, I'll grab that knight. And I'll hope to apply pressure on his pawn that ends up on c6. Okay, um, so I can't take on d5, I don't believe, because he can take on e5. But I can play bishop d2 and just develop. He plays e6, solid. Mm, let's take. He takes with the knight. Let's just keep developing. Could play b5 somewhere soon. Don't know that I'm overly concerned about that, but it's a possibility. You know, just to, just to hedge against that, let's play a4. I don't think I'll regret having played a4, so... There's some vulnerability in my h2 pawn, so I mean he could consider more radical stuff like queen h4, but he just opts for queen b6. Okay, so now I could avoid the queen trade, play queen a2. I could take and then play a5, but allow knight c4. It's probably not a bad option. Let's go with that, because I think that leads to a pretty easy position to play. And if he jumps in, I, I like the fact that I can take and then play e4. I won't have the bishop pair, but I can then put my bishop on e3, and I'll be x-raying his rook on a7. So I think he should probably go back with his knight to d7. And then maybe I can continue with rook fc8 or knight a4. Yeah, so I'm going to proceed as planned and do this, and then e4. And I'll try to lock his bishop out of the game if I'm able. This bishop, I mean. Like I was thinking about f3 as a possibility. He may go f5 to liberate it, but f3 I think is a useful move. Maybe knight a4 now. The knight coming into b6 is potentially troubling for him. How does that gel with him having f5, though? Because that move makes sense, should he choose this plan. I'm going to go rook fc1 first, before making a decision about this knight. Okay, and he settles for that. Yeah, now let's go knight a4. I like the fact that he's played f6. I think he's less likely to play f5 now that he's done that. So I want to bring my knight into b6, hit the rook on c8, hit the pawn on c4. If he plays rook c6 here to avoid... Um, losing a tempo when I do play knight c6. I think I'll play knight b6 anyways, and I'm controlling the c8 square, so he can't easily double and defend this pawn. So, I don't want to say that I'm winning a pawn yet, but it's looking promising. If he plays f5 now... Okay, so he does that, and I play... I'll continue as I intended. I can maybe try bishop c7, but at the very least I can take with my knight on c4. Bishop c7 intending, if I play rook takes c4, to play bishop takes b6. With maybe having in mind rook takes c6, bishop takes d4. That would be an interesting line. I think bishop c7 might not be a bad choice for him right now. Place bishop b4 instead. Okay. D5 I can play. His threat is to take on A5, and if I just take right now, that will net me a pawn, but I feel like I should have more. I don't want to get greedy, but it just feels that way. D5, pawn takes, pawn takes. Looks pretty good. 
can almost just win an exchange nearly. Let's do that. Let's go d5. Pass d pawn. And I'm kind of thinking his rook doesn't have a lot of squares. Like c7 is practically the only safe square in addition to d6. But d6 would kind of strand his bishop. Oh, bishop c5. I thought there was a chance he might play that. Okay, but now I can take and then play knight d7. And I'm forking his two rooks. If he takes on d5, I take on f8 and then win the c4 pawn. So I like my chances to uh, win the exchange and not lose a pawn in the process. Okay, and he just resigned. Okay, so 26 move win. Good one to get back on track. Let's take a look at this. So this is the Shebenenko Slav a6. And of course the idea is to prepare b5. It's the whole point of this system. There's several ways why I can play it. Um, if you're an exchange Slav aficionado, you might prefer just taking on d5 immediately. Um, e3 is a very safe way of playing against this line. So bishop f5. I'm not as familiar with bishop f5, I gotta be honest. More so I just see the immediate b5 and then b3. But bishop f5 certainly has merit. Um, I think this is actually like a relatively new system. If this is the system I'm thinking of, it was recommended by um, Boris Avruk in his book by Quality Chess on the Slav. But please don't quote me on that because <laughs> I don't own the book. I just, I kind of remember this recommendation that he might have made. So as I've talked about in, in previous videos, Queen B3 is a move that you always want to look at when in a d4, d5 opening, your opponent's developing their light square bishop early. So I do take that pawn under observation and I apply more pressure to d5. He played rook a7. I took on d5. This move may not be necessary yet, but the virtue of taking now is that he doesn't have the option of taking with the e pawn should he play e6 in the near future. So I'm ruling that out. Because sometimes taking with the e pawn is beneficial for them. Knight e5. So this move was just trying to preempt knight c6. I was making it so that if he does play knight c6, he has to pay a penalty in the form of his backward pawn on c6 and also this isolated pawn. Maybe I can go, oh, I don't know, queen a4 perhaps, or uh, maybe in the middle game, I can play bishop d2 and rook c1 and knight a4 and pressurize that pawn. So just wanted to make him think twice about where to develop it. And here, so I don't think I spent a whole ton of time on this move, but I did briefly consider like knight takes d5, knight takes e5, knight check. takes f6 check, but it didn't seem to me in the limited time that I was analyzing this that it would lead to much. Like let's say e takes f6, d takes e5, um, f takes e5, and we have material equality, the center has been wiped out practically. I don't think white has much here. Let's just check with the engine. Yeah. Minimal, if anything. So, probably, yeah, probably just a developing move is in order. Wow, the engine really likes f3 in this position. Not a plan I considered. f3 intending e4 or maybe g4, I assume. Hmm. Mainly g4, it looks like. Let's look at this line. So... Having the knight on e5 is kind of nice because he can't ever really take here without losing a pawn. Like something like this, I think like I can probably just go and win a pawn. Although the computer thinks he might have some comp. But um, let's look at what happens if he just plays like a natural move after f3. So like this, g4, bishop g6, h4. Uh-huh. Yeah, that is one virtue of having the knight on e5 already. So I'm crowding his bishop, I'm threatening h5, and traditionally he'd play h6 or h5 himself to address that threat, but since I have this knight on e5, if he plays h6, I get to take. And this pawn structure where they have to take back with the g-pawn, this is dangerous for black. A lot of slot players will tell you it's um, often not a good thing if you end up with this structure. There's too many easy moves for white to play and attack this pawn. In fact, I think that pawn is just dropping off if white really wants it, something like this. 
Okay, so when when I played knight e5, maybe I should have been more aware of the fact that f3 was a potential plan, preparing uh, g4 or potentially e4 as well. e4 being possible because if the pawn were to take, assuming everything else stays the same, queen takes f7, mate would be the punishment. Hmm. So I just played bishop d2, he played e6, and then I took... Okay, so not much in this position. A4, didn't really like my choice to play that. H4, the engine suggests. <laughs> I wasn't going to play H4. That's that's an interesting suggestion, though, by the computer. Maybe not so subtly threatening G4, Bishop G6, H5. <laughs> I don't know if I'm castling short, though, after that. Well, it gives some wacky lines, like H5, Knight takes D5. And then after pawn takes, queen takes, hitting both of these bishops, that's another possibility I didn't consider whatsoever. He can play queen f6 to defend both of them, but then the engine says e4 should lead to some small advantage for white. And once this bishop moves, I can regain the piece by playing e5. I mean, for that matter, I could do that without the inclusion of h4, h5, right? Like, if that's possible after this and this, like, why, why is it not possible here? Yeah, it's another line that I should consider. Take, take, queen f6, e4, bishop g6, e5. Wow. Take, take, let's say queen takes, and then okay. trade, and bishop b4 at the end, preventing him from castling. And even though I might lose this pawn, the computer thinks white has good compensation. Let's see. Take rook d1. <laughs> this is astounding how many resources are available, mainly from white's point of view, but I really gotta say, like, these exchange slob positions have a tendency and a reputation of being pretty boring. And I mean, when I just played bishop d2 and then bishop e2, I was just thinking, okay, let's castle. You know, I don't want to use too much time in such an equal, symmetrical looking position, but. It's just amazing. Like chess is such a rich game. Like how many resources are possible in a seemingly quiet position? Like knight takes d5. I mean, <laughs> in a longer game, I might have seen that move and analyzed it, but it didn't even cross my radar in a short game like this. So I played a4, just trying to stop him from expanding with b5. Castled. I castled. Oh, that's an interesting move that the computer was saying. Knight b8. Yeah, because. When he developed that knight to d7 way back on move 8, um, I think a lot of slob players feel like, I know I do since I play the slob complex, sometimes when you when you end up with a knight on d7, it, it's kind of like a longing for the c6 square. Maybe I can flip the board just to show this. But um, that knight would be much better off on the c6 square. It would have options of going to a5. Um, maybe it would attack d4 a little bit, so like something like e4 for white is not as readily possible. On d7, it's kind of limited by my pawn on d4. It's probably not going to go to f6 or b6 with any sort of decisive effect. So the knight b8 is a real common slob maneuver that you see. It, it happens in other openings too, like um, I think the Karo Khan, it happens sometimes. But the slob, it's like this is a notorious knight maneuver. So rerouting the knight there. He can get away with it because there's no breaks that I have. There's no immediate way for me to open the position. So that would have been a astute repositioning of the knight for him. He played queen b6. I think it's good that I traded. Played a5. Yeah, so this this exchanging operation, it just led to a more harmonious position for me. I got the queens off. I kind of maybe messed up his structure a little bit. Like that c4 pawn is cut off from his b7 supporter. So this b-pawn can't come up and, and help protect the c4 pawn. So I went f3, just trying to target the rook. And I mentioned I wanted to keep this piece out of play if I could. So I played f3. It might be in his best interest to try to play a move like f5 here. Just to get me to do something with this pawn. And maybe his bishop can come back faster and seek better horizons on the queen side. He did this, rook fc1. I used this rook because the queen side is going to be where 
most of the action is taking place. Also, I want to keep my a1 rook observing the pawn on a5, just in case like a move like bishop b4 happens, as it did. Yeah, and the engine's suggesting he go f5 and just break in the middle, or break on the king side, trying to open it up a little bit before this piece becomes too bad of a piece. I think he played f6 here. Yeah, he played f6. And I got this knight a4 move in. Now I was starting to feel very confident at this point because it seemed like I was winning a pawn. Yep, d5, like this move. Because I, I didn't want to do something like knight take c4 when maybe he could um, play this and I have to take a timeout to defend my knight. It does seem like I've just gained a free pawn, but he's more coordinated now. So I sort of figured this knight on b6 is troublesome to him because he can't use the c8 square for his rook. So maybe I can use that to my advantage and play d5, create a pass pawn. Yeah, now here it does look like he should play rook c7. And I wasn't entirely sure how I was going to play after that. Let's just think for a second. So if rook c7, I think I was considering a couple different things. Uh, moves like rook a4, so coming up to attack the bishop, and then if the bishop moves, grab the pawn. Um, bishop f4 crossed my mind, although I don't know how great that is because he has bishop c5. I could just take now, let's say rook takes c4, just go in for a position like this. Out of all these moves, hmm, I think I like rook a4 the best. Somehow that just that move just seems right. Forces bishop away, and then let's say his bishop comes back to d6, then grab this pawn. I like keeping this knight glued to b6. I really don't want him to use that, that c8 square. So let's see what the engine suggests if rook c7. Okay, it does like rook a4. It gives a very healthy advantage too. Rook a4, yeah, bishop d6. Take, 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 yeah. This is nice for white. Yep, and as played, he chose the in-between move, sort of, bishop c5, which is a nice idea, hoping for take, and then check. take with check, and then pick up the rook. But, unfortunately, I just had this straightforward solution, swapping in the knight d7, and he's going to lose the exchange, and the c-pawn remains weak after that. Very likely, I just win it, so resigning is not, not premature here. Yeah, plus three. So, okay, short game, but an intriguing one. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. And please feel free to leave me any feedback in the comments. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Bye.